Facebook Live? Hi, Facebook. How's everybody doing out there in Facebook land? <laughs> it's, it's nice that we have it's nice that we have the opportunity to go Facebook Live, isn't it? As a matter of fact, we were talking before um, before service in the fireside room, and I love I say this all the time, but I love what happens in that fireside room before church between like five and six thirty every Saturday night. So come early if you are so inclined and fellowship and hang out and. We were just talking about relationships, and we have at least at least one person, and probably more, that attended Bikers Church on Facebook Live for once, twice, months, maybe, who knows, and then eventually decided, hey, I'm going to go there in person. And, um, you know, so Facebook Live is a very important part of our ministry here at Bikers Church. So, hi, Facebook Live. We are glad you are with us. And every now and then I look at that Facebook Live thing on, like, Wednesday, and I'm like, 185 views? Who does that? But like, who are these people? So, I don't know, at some point, I'd like to know who you 185 people are that are watching Facebook Live, so, you know, reach out to me. And maybe we'll meet you at a bike run or something this, uh, this year. So, speaking of bike runs, next Sunday, the Big Brian ride is happening, and we are going to be meeting for that ride at the King Supers that's down on Safe South Safeway. Safeway. The safe way. <laughs> what is wrong with me? I don't even, I've never shopped there. That's the problem, I think. But it's not the one that I want it to be that's down there on 115. It's not that one. It's the one that's on South Nevada at Southgate. Correct? Yeah. yeah. See, that's what's wrong with me. I want it to be the one that I go to all the time that's down there off 115 <laughs> South Cabinet Boulevard. That makes sense in my head, but nobody asked. So, there we go. So now that everybody knows where we're going to ride from, we're going to meet there at 1130. It currently looks like it's not going to snow, but we live in Colorado, so we know the deal with that. Um, if something does happen with that, though, they have a, a snow date or a rescheduled date for the next weekend, February 7th. February 7th? Yeah. Yeah. Um, hopefully we get to do it on January 31st. And just so you know, because of the generosity of people and the biker benevolence that is raised every year through the blessing of the bike, Spikers Church will be making a $1,000 contribution to the Brian. Okay. So. Which leads me right into everybody needs to make sure that they bring 20 of their closest friends to the blessing of the bikes. Right? Yeah. Right. Right. Because every penny of that, that's a completely 100% volunteer effort that day, and every penny of that money goes into our benevolence fund for just things like this. So without the blessing of the bikes last year, we wouldn't have that money to be giving to, to Brian. So that event is huge for us. So be sure to support that. And just so you know, this is way in advance, but put it on your calendar. It's always the first Saturday of June. So this year it'll be June 5th. Um, always the first Saturday in June. So um, January 25th, which is this coming Monday, is Bikers United for America, um, 6.30 p.m. down at Post 5 downtown. And Bikers Church is a part of Bufa, so we will be there. February 6th, I will be doing baptisms here at Bikers Church, and currently we are going to be baptizing at least five people that night. Whoa. That's exciting. Um, if you are interested in being baptized, reach out to me. And as a matter of fact, Facebook Live, I have talked to two people through Facebook Live efforts um, that are interested in that, so that's cool. February 6th, um, same day as our baptisms, that morning the Harley Owners Group meets and um, the Harley Owners Group has their Frosted Nut Ride that day because it was rescheduled from the beginning of January because that day sucked. Um, February 13th, the Special Forces Motorcycle Club is having their Blue Balls Ride. That should be cold too. Um, and the book discussion I already talked a little bit about. Bikers Church has been blessed here at the church with a bulletin board that belongs strictly and solely to us. It is our space, and we are going to decorate it with our stuff, which is really a cool thing. So when you first come in the church and you take a left to go down the hallway to the bathrooms, right there on that wall is our bulletin board. So um, I put some information up there about the Brian ride for next week. 
And the other thing that I put up there um, tonight with the help of Jenny and Roxy is our Compassion Kids. And here at Bikers Church, we sponsor three kids through Compassion. And um, those kids' profiles are up on the bulletin board out there. So if you'd like to read more about those three kids, know more about those three kids, you can check that information out, out and we'll have that up. And if you are inclined to write to one of them, I can help you out with how to do that. And then you can return that letter to me and I will get that letter mailed off to one of our sponsored kids. So you can participate in our ministry um, in that way through, um, through that bulletin board. So that's kind of cool. Very I like that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We can put all kinds of bike event flyers up on that thing all, all summer long. And um, yeah, I'm really happy about that. That only took one request. I asked Casper, who manages this building, one time for a bulletin board. And three hours later, he called me and said, I've cleared a board for you. I was like, oh, nice. That was easy. It's not always that easy, I'm just saying. All right, so we are continuing on in the book of Romans this evening, and this is our final night on Romans chapter 6. I'm going to read the entire passage this evening, Romans chapter 6, starting at verse 1. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like this, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like this. Like his, sorry. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then are we to sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, who were once slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed, and having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is God's word. Father God, again, I thank you for the opportunity now to address your people. Father, I thank you for this church, for the people that make up this church, not the building, but the relationships within I thank you for those also on Facebook that are, yes, indeed, a part of this body of believers, even though they are not here in person. Thank you. Father, I ask that everyone listening, present, that we would all have open minds to receive the things that you want us to know. And Father, that we would have willing spirits to receive the hope and truth 
and correction that you want to bind to our spirit. Father, I pray that we would carry this with us in our lives. That we wouldn't walk out of here tonight and leave it all behind, but that we would take it with us and it would become a part of who we are as we walk through each day. And Father, I ask that you would always give us amazing kingdom work to do and great fun doing it so that other people can come to know a saving relationship in Jesus Christ. Father, I ask that you would increase now as I decrease before you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The past is gone. And we say, leave it all behind. The songs that we sing say, leave it all behind. We can't do anything about the past. This month in this lesson has been full of things about change. We've talked about surrendering. We've talked about believing in ourselves. We've talked about new life in Jesus and power in Jesus. We've talked about the power of letting go. We've talked about forgiveness and establishing and having and continuing relationship with Jesus. We've talked about being set free from the past, from bondage, from things that try to hold on to us. And we've talked about helping others. All of these lessons from Romans chapter 6 are really about leaving the past behind and moving forward into the change of today, next week, this year, next year. About leaving garbage where garbage belongs. Our past is not our prison. And we really need to get a hold of that truth. The gift of God in Jesus Christ is about eternal life. And that eternal life starts now. Amen. Not when we get to heaven. And we come back to that. I come back to that all the time because you guys, if we are just, if we are just living about getting to heaven, then we're just living about dying. And we need to be living about living. We need to be living that kingdom life here on earth now. Because this place is a mess, right? Like, I don't know that anybody is going to disagree with that. This earth is an absolute mess. Right? And some people people say, Jesus, come. Somebody said that to me the other day. They were like, come, Jesus, come. And I'm like, yeah, but not like, yeah, but, yeah, but. If he comes now, what about those five friends of mine that I've been ministering to that, that don't know him yet, that haven't received him yet? Like, wait, not, don't come now. But people want him to come because they're tired of what's going on now. Right? And I get that. I get that. But you guys, we're living the kingdom now. And that's why I always say our kingdom work is here on earth. What we're doing is, is for the now. So we need to live the kingdom for the mess and the garbage of this earth today. And we also need to let the mess and the garbage of this earth die to us. It very often holds too much power for the weight that it really is. Our destiny is to become more like Jesus, right? That's, that's that whole what would Jesus do thing, which is, you know, a, a, a good rule to live by, but to bring kingdom belief to the lost and broken and dying generation of today is what we really need to be living for. We really need to be living for those people that are stuck in the now, stuck in the hate, stuck in the anger, stuck in the unforgiveness, stuck in the resentment, stuck in the now. 
What does God know about the change that needs to happen in our lives? Right? And I, I always think that's an important thing because we always talk about how we need to change. We need to talk about how we need to grow. We talk about how we need to forgive and move on. And, and, and we, need to, we need to evolve into better people, right? What does God know about having to change? Right? Because God's God, right? So what does God know about having to change? And that takes us um, into our other scripture for tonight, which is in Isaiah chapter 42. And Isaiah is in the Old Testament, so we're going to go in the book to the left if you're holding a book. Um, so what does God know about this change that needs to occur in us? Well, I think that we need to acknowledge that, that God saw fit to change his way of doing things by sending Jesus to this planet to die for us. God in the Old Testament had that whole Old Testament set of some 700 and some odd rules in the law, and he saw fit to change stuff up a little bit. So what does he know about change? Isaiah chapter 42, starting in verse 1. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth. And the coastlands wait for his law. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it, I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to carved idols. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. God says, I know a lot about change. God says, I sent Jesus to you to change the way we do things. God knew that the law and the regulations and the guilt and the sacrificial systems and all of those things, it wasn't working. Messiah is what he was going to send to this earth. He was going to send that final sacrifice. He was sending Messiah to this earth. He was sending Jesus to this earth, sending him to be humble and human, just like you. What we knew in the Old Testament was this God that people feared, that they were afraid of, that they, that, you know, and, and that God, if you, if you are locked and loaded on that God, man, we need to have coffee. I really want to have coffee with you to talk about that. Because God sent Jesus to walk this earth so that we could see God in human form, so that we could see the love, the love that he has for us. What God leaves their throne in heaven where everything is perfect to come walk on this trash of a planet? Our God. Our God did that. God knew that we needed connection with him. God knew that, that the people felt too far away from God. He knew that we needed to feel close to him. He said that Jesus will bring justice, but he will deliver it in a meek and mild way. Jesus Christ, as he walked this earth, he was like, he could have flattened anybody, right? But he was a man, a fisherman, you know, raised in the house of a carpenter, playing in sawdust, you know? He was a simple man. He'd walk around in robes. God knew that we needed mercy. He knew that we needed to understand mercy. He knew that we needed to know that Jesus would love the betrayers. 
He said that his Messiah would not give up or give in. God knew that we needed to visually see him in action in order to copy him. Jesus did not give up or give in. We need to not give up or give in. God promised to keep and sustain Jesus in the very same way he knew, God knew, that we needed to know that he would not give up on us and that he would keep us and sustain us and give us the energy that we need to keep going. He sent Jesus to fulfill a mission of love, to open the eyes of the blind and to set the prisoners free. And we're the prisoners. We're the captives. And he needed to turn on spiritual lights for us to be able to see that we can get out of the dungeons that we put ourselves in. He said, I am God and I am a jealous God. He is a jealous God. He will have no other gods before him. And that kind of thing makes us kind of shrink back and then we see that God again, right? But he's a jealous God in a way that he says, I'm a jealous God and I will have no other gods before me, but I am sending a humble Messiah, my son, to walk the earth because he knew that we needed to understand grace. He knew that we needed to feel safe with him, but he is a jealous God. He said, the former things are gone and the new things I, I now declare. The former things are gone and the new things I now declare. And we need to be able to stand on that hope. <clears throat> we need to say to ourselves, we need to say to our demons, if you will, we need to be able to say, the old crap is gone and my new life has come and I'm going to walk in the newness of that. God knows a lot about change, you guys, a lot. He sent Jesus to bring change to the world. He sent Jesus to bring change to us. A sense of hope that the kingdom is, in fact, here on earth. When God sent Jesus from heaven to walk this earth, the kingdom arrived on this planet. Amen. And that kingdom has been on this planet ever since. We are capable of living better. We can live better. We are not pathetic humans that are doomed to failure. The enemy wants us to buy that crap. The enemy wants us to buy that lie. The enemy wants us to believe that. It's not true. In God's old order under the law, people always felt that gloom and doom, and they always felt that failing and fixing, and they always felt that he's just so far away thing, and not a lot of hope in all of that. But now our kingdom hope is in this Jesus. Our kingdom hope is in this Messiah. Our kingdom hope is in this relationship that we are in now with our God. And I want to park there for just a minute because I think that so many of us get stuck on the idea that, that we have to be perfect to get God's love. You know, when, when I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and I ask him to forgive me of my sins, I ask him to forgive me of my sins, past, present, and future, now, that doesn't give me a free license to go be a jerk all the time, right? But when I am a jerk, and when I do fail, and when I do screw up, and when I do hurt somebody, that's forgiven too. And we don't have to go back and beg him to forgive us again. And we don't have to beat ourselves up for screwing that up. We don't have to be afraid that God's going, good job, Jamie. Man, it's all that coming. You know, God doesn't do that. The point of Jesus is that we can't be perfect to get God's love. 
So he sent him to give us that spiritual freedom. God will give his glory to no one and nothing, which means Jesus' mission was to promote God's glory to the world in flesh and to give hope to God's people that he loves them and that he desires to be close to them. What God wants from us is to give him glory. That's what he wants from us. When, my, when I live my life to give him glory, yes, it pleases him. But when I screw something up, he's not pissed off at me. And we get stuck there. We as humans get stuck there. When something bad happens, it's God's fault. Or God's mad at us. And somehow that was a punishment for something that we did. We need to acknowledge God for who he is and for how much he loves us. What he says to us in those moments is, come to me. Or come back to me. Don't turn your back on me. I haven't turned my back on you. I forgive you. I forgave you already. Jesus Christ lives on the throne of your heart and you are forgiven. Past, present, future, all of it. So here's the thing. And this is what we do, right? As humans, we hold really good grudges. Look, you hurt me, you piss me off, right? I'm capable of holding a grudge. Anybody else? Okay, good. Just want to make sure I wasn't alone. Like, you know, some, and, and, I, and I get to forgiveness pretty good, yeah. right? Yeah. We get to forgiveness pretty good because we want to be forgiven. But as human beings, we hold good grudges. God doesn't. God doesn't hold grudges. And we need to be very careful that we do not attach human traits to God Almighty. And we are really good at doing that. And some of us have really crappy history relationships with fathers, right? So we also like to attach that to God the Father. And we need to not do that. We need to not attach human traits to God Almighty. Because when God says the former things are gone, guess what? They're gone, right? We're free from those hindrances when we decide we are. Because he already said, you're free from those hindrances. He already said it. But we don't let go. We hold grudges with ourselves. What could I have done better? Where did I screw up? How did I mess that up? Why did I do that? I shouldn't do that. I suck. Everybody hates me. We do that. And we do that because the enemy is constantly talking in our ear going, you suck. You just suck. You're just a pathetic little human, and God can't forgive you. And when we buy that crap, you guys, when we buy that, that's us. We need to not do that. We need to move away from yesterday and its troubles and its failures and its screw-ups, and we need to move forward into God's plan for our lives. And that is what this whole thing in Romans 6 is about. It's about moving into the new life and letting go of all of that other stuff. It's about letting him be our guide into our destiny. Because if you're like me and you've messed some stuff up but good in your life, right? You are nowhere near your destiny yet. God has plans for your life that you can't even fathom. But we have to be willing to keep walking forward and choosing differently and better and just move on. We need to always, always, always remember his love for us. Especially in those dark moments when we're absolutely convinced that no one could love us. And boy, have I been there. When something in life happens and it is absolutely tragic, that is just, it just sucks. It just sucks. 
But we have to know that when tragic things happen, God is not missing. God is there. He is present. And he wants us to lean in. We as humans have a tendency to lean out. You can't possibly understand. I, and I have said this over and over and over again. And I'll keep saying it over and over and over again because I think it is insanely important for us to remember. When crap happens in our lives, and I have been through my fair share of giant piles of it, right? When you are in it, it hurts. The worst thing in the world that we can do is lean away from God. The worst thing in the world that we can do is lean away from God. Because when we, and, 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 and when we lean into humans, like that might be a good choice, but does, is that a human leaned into God? Because it might be a really crappy choice. Because that human isn't leaned into God, we're really in trouble. Right? We need to be leaned into him, even when we're mad, even when we're hurt. I hate when people say this to me when I'm really hurt and when something really crappy has happened. And those of you that know the you know, past couple of years of my life have been challenging. And, and people say to me, hang in there, Jamie, because one day you're going to be able to help somebody with this. And I just want to punch them in their neck. Right? I'm like, I, I don't want to hear that. I don't, I don't want to hear that. But they were right. But they were right. But they were absolutely right. They're absolutely right. Because absolutely everything that happens in my life is part of my destiny. It's part of what God needs to build in my testimony. And the very first part of my testimony is a test. And I don't believe that God is a puppeteer. I need to say that to you because I don't believe that God is a puppeteer. And he's like, let's see how she does with this test. Uh-uh. I believe the enemy is. Because what's his only job? To screw with you. And this earth is his playground. Right? And, and I believe that the, the crappy thing that that's ha the crappy things that happen on this planet are are moved by him. And that test that we go under, it's a Job thing, right? Yeah. Like we walk through it and we keep our head up and we get through it and we don't take it out on people, places and things and we don't destroy stuff and we don't, at the end of that test that the enemy organized for us, God says, well done, Amen. good and faithful servant. Amen. Now help somebody else with that thing that you've been through. And that, Christian, gives God all the glory. Amen. When somebody watches us walk through it with relationship with him, that gives him the glory. When we walk through it and we hold our head up and we, and we get to the end of that, we are the prisoner that is set free. We are the one that walks in the fullness of life. And we tell the enemy, oh, screw you. And all of that, all of that that you wanted to take me down with. No, not having it. Not having it. And we stand our ground in the fullness of life, knowing that we're okay. If you're still sucking air, you have work to do for the kingdom. And I am just thrilled that I get to be a part of a body of believers that is this badass. Right? Yeah, I'm happy about that. Because that's the honest truth, you guys. We are, we are the, we're the ragamuffins. <laughs> Right? And I don't know if you saw my Facebook post this week, and I wish I could remember all of the words, but it's like, I love all the weirdos and the crazy people. And this, that, that. Because we're the, we're the ones. We're the ones. We're the ones that can carry the message to the broken and dying generation that is mad at God still. It doesn't understand it's about relationship. We're the ones. 
We're going to touch the most people that are the farthest from God. Because we've been the farthest from God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I want to close this, this lesson that we've been walking through for January on, you guys, we need to live life to the fullest. And if anybody knows how to live life to the fullest, it's a freaking biker. Amen. Right? Amen. We need to live life to the fullest. We need to live the kingdom here on this earth. We need to, live to deliver the message of hope and freedom to the people that are still in bondage and still not willing to let go of their past and still not willing to let go of their resentments with God and still not willing to explore relationship with Jesus Christ. We need to be the ones that carry that. We need to be the ones. And as we go through this year and we are those people, we are going to watch lives changed. We are going to watch people be set free. We are going to watch people find Jesus Christ. We're going to watch people go into the waters of baptism over and over and over again. We're going to watch the biggest blessing of the bikes ever happen. We're going to watch people come to know Jesus Christ because of the blessing of the bikes. We're going to watch people come in back into church again because we were able to reach out to them and love them and touch them where no one else could. Praise you. Amen. That's what we're going to do this year. We're going to have the biggest freaking toy run, and we had a pretty big one last year. We're going to have a bigger one this year. Amen. And we're going to add more kids to that. And those, those parents are going to know that that happened because the ragamuffins at Biker's Church love the broken people. Amen. Amen. That's who we're going to be this year. That's who we're always going to be. But that's who we're going to be this year. Amen and amen? Amen. And amen. 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 I don't even know if I need to yeah, pray. God, thank you. Again, thank you. Thank you for this mighty little church of ragamuffin bikers and people that love bikers. Father, thank you that, that we do understand being beaten and broken. And we understand being disconnected from you. Father, the darkest years of my life were the years that I was mad at you. Thank you for never getting mad at me. Thank you that in the end, at the end of that road, you were just standing there going, girl, I have always been standing right here. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to share that message with broken people just like me. Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for walking out of heaven and walking on earth with us so that we know that at the end of the day, you know what it feels like to be betrayed. You know what it feels like to be beaten up. You know what it feels like to be attacked. You know what it feels like to feel anger. And you know what it feels like to feel sadness and dismay and everything that we have ever felt. Thank you for being willing to walk the human life so that we can know that, yes, you get it. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for always being willing to be here and sit on my shoulder and say, that's a bad idea, Jamie. And thank you for redirecting my path with love and mercy and grace and kindness. And I think all God's people said, Amen. 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 Anyone.